Hey, good morning. Right, okay. I'm going to talk to you uh, in this video in in a particularly different way than I've done in the past. Um, obviously, I've got a nice new flip chart. I want to use that. Uh, but basically, um, I want to try and help you get into my mind, into my mindset. Um, we're just about to enter into what I think is probably going to be one of the most um, exciting periods um, on the online world. Um, simply because there's we've gone through a period of the past 18 months where there's been a lot of rubbish and scam programs and governments and authorities are really getting cute with this now and they're starting to get rid of a lot of those programs out of the way and so what's going to happen is a lot of cream is now going to start to rise to the top and thankfully I've, i feel that i'm involved in a large proportion of that cream businesses and we're just about to uh, enter a new business that we've got um really really good interests and links with um and i'm getting asked a lot of questions about um, I'm involved in this business with you, Darren, but you're not my sponsor. This person's my sponsor. You know, what happens if, you know, this sponsor comes in or whatever? So I, I just want to help you understand what it is to be a sponsor, but also probably more importantly, what it is to be a, um, a referral or affiliate or somebody who's looking to join a business and organization. Now, without getting into any sort of where, uh, wherewithals, I thought it'd be really interesting if I used or probably useful for people to understand is how to use these two analogies that, or this analogy here that uh, everybody's probably largely familiar with, and if not, then I'm sure they could do a Google search and, and look them up. And they are Disney World and Universal Studios. Both of them, in effect, are theme parks. Um, Disney World is clearly on a bigger scale, but everybody's familiar with it, and Universal Studios is everybody's uh, largely familiar with uh, the roller coaster rides, with the Harry Potter world, and, and everything that's around that. Now, the big question is, if you're going to spend a considerable amount of money to go and visit these uh, these sites, which one are you more likely to go to to go and visit? Now, I was really fortunate this year that I was able to go and visit both of these. And um, now, Disney World, it's not my bag. Um, I really I enjoyed Disney when I was younger. I enjoy the, the Disney films that they're doing now, but it's not you know I'm not mad for for um, Mickey Mouse and Pluto and all that. Um, I hated to add, obviously, we, my daughter's got um, a frame there. But I've got a five-year-old daughter, and I've got a 21-year-old daughter, and I've got a, uh, my wife, Sue. And they are mad for Disney. They love it. All the princesses, you know, they really, really enjoy Disney World. So we went to Disney World, and I've got to say, I had an amazing time. Um, and I'll go through why that was. And it's not, you know, this isn't a video about my holiday. This is just a, a video about experiences. Universal Studios we also went to because my older daughter is really, really excited and keen about Harry Potter. And as most of you all know, that that's where Harry Potter world is. So our experiences between the two were really, really contrasting. And it did make me think, as I come into this period in, in uh, teaching and coaching people how to develop teams and, and um, how to empower them to have a better experience with people that they come into contact with, I thought this would be really useful. Disney World. For those of you who have not been, it is immaculate. Everything works. There isn't a light bulb that doesn't work. There is no litter on the floor. There is no graffiti. Everybody who's female is called a princess. So, and that includes, you know, the people who are in charge of the rides, the managers, uh, the chefs, the waitresses, even the cleaners. You know, absolutely everybody is, ref is refers to all the women and all the girls that are, are in Disney World as the princess. And it's just these little things that absolutely make these little girls' lives fantastic. Everybody's really happy. It is sickly sweet, but you buy into it, believe me. It is really, really a fantastic experience. The food is brilliant. The rides are great. Yes, there's huge queues, but you get entertained in those huge queues. Um, there is a system, you know, just lots and lots going on. And it's just a fantastic experience. And I think those people who've been... Will be able to relate to that. Universal Studios contrast. Universal Studios is a theme park. They're there to make money, and do, boy, do you know it. And the there, it is dirty. Um, you will get. I, I went to ask for a drink, um, cold water, and I was told it's just over there. Now, if I was in Disney World, I'd have been taken over there. I'd have been asked if I was enjoying myself. What I've been to see it, I've been in, there would have been some interaction. It's a theme park, they're there to make money. Universal Studios is really lucky that it's got Harry Potter, 
Harry Potter world is amazing, really is. And you know, I'm not say, decrying that everybody who works in, in Universal Studios is horrible, they're not. It's just the contrast that I'm trying to trying to build there for you. And so, as a sponsor or as a um, as somebody who's looking to join um, a business, you need to have this approach. If I'm going to spend a considerable amount of money and enjoy myself and have a great time, I'm going to go to Disney World every single time because I can absolutely guarantee the service, um, the rides, the fun, everything. Universal Studios has better rides, really good rides. Some of them are really scary. But in, you know, if I was going to go back again, it's Disney World is where I'm going to go because that's where the experience is and that's what I'm going to be able to, to remember and enjoy. So just remember that, that you will have had some experience of um, a sponsor or or um, an organisation that has been really, really good and helpful for you. And you've bought into that person and you've bought into that, that company. What I'm asking you to do now is just take a step back before you start to go into another company, before you start to think about building a team, before you start to think about recruiting um, affiliates or anything like that, is just think about what it is that you're going to be doing and providing for those individuals. So, for example, um, things that I'm looking for, I'm looking for, when I go into a business, I'm not looking to follow my sponsor. And I have always had this mindset that, okay, Fred sponsored me into this business. Therefore, if Fred goes into the next business, I've got to follow, we would call it follow the leader. I don't buy into that at all. And I know that is really, really controversial. And there's a lot of people are going to get very, very cross and very, very angry about this, this statement. I am not suggesting that you drop your sponsor or anything like that. What I'm asking you to do is just consider your next steps carefully. You are responsible for your mortgage, your rent, your children's uh, education. You are responsible for putting food on the table. You are in charge of your life, not Fred the sponsor. Now, he may be fantastic, but is he providing what you actually need? And if he isn't, you just need to question that. Speak to Fred. Find out what's going on. Yeah, the the onus and the responsibility is all yours. Okay, just be really, really clear on that. Now, obviously, um, where am I going with this? So, there's a couple of programs that I've joined in the past, and I've joined my sponsor. I followed the leader, and I've got the same rubbish support and help and training that I got in the other program, and therefore I didn't get very far. So, what I did was that I started to look for a a decent program, a decent company a decent product to work with. And I then went up and up and up and up until I found the right person who was going to be able to help support and provide um, training really for me and people who are likely to follow me. Because you've got to bear in mind that we very often join a company because a friend has told us to and that it's really good. And we join our friend. Now our friend may well have joined that company only a week earlier. Now if that friend has great support and structure from his sponsor, that's brilliant. You know, we've landed lucky. We're working with our friend and we're getting tra great training, coaching and support. However, our friend may have just joined the first link that he found on the internet or the first person that spoke to him. Has no idea about the program, how to market it, how to present themselves, how to present the product, whatever. So just be pleased, really, really careful about who you are joining. And again, I'm grabbing onto the old, um, the old sayings here is that People join people, and you need to make sure that you are attracting the right types of people in the right way by providing the right type of environment that people are going to be able to uh, grow, develop, not necessarily financially, although that's really nice, but also internally, mentally, um, professionally. Um, they need to have that environment that they've been able to grow and expand and develop. So I always look for honesty. Um, make sure that um, you are honest in a good way, but also honest in a bad way. If someone's not doing the right thing, you need to tell them that they're not doing the right thing or they will continue doing it. So if somebody in my team um, is not doing as they should be doing or saying or promising they're going to do something, but they don't, then there has to be a point when I say, mm, right, well, look, you know, I've helped and supported you for so long, but you need to now start doing it yourself. You also need to provide an environment of support and communication. So you need to have email, you need to have a blog, you need to have a YouTube, you need to have Skype, you need to have Hangouts, you need to have Twitter. You need to have that any number of communication 
methods that people can get in touch with you. I know, believe me, it can be a bit of a hassle. You get up in the morning, you open your emails, bang, you've got eight emails there. Some of them are always asking the same question. Well, sometimes it's just about you then providing a video. Da -da, this is what I'm doing. Okay, I've had a number of questions about this topic, so this is why I'm providing this video. You also need to be able to provide an environment of training and coaching. Now, you may be really new to online marketing, you may be really new to this business, this product, whatever. But if you are, if you ask the right people, they will be able to provide you with the right training. And if your sponsor, your your leader, call it whatever you want, they should have that that environment for you. Now, whether that is directing them to a training platform, or whether that's directing them to a YouTube, whether that's directing them to a blog, it doesn't really matter. A Skype forum, anything like that, so long as they have the ability, the forum, to be able to pick ideas about how do I engage somebody, how do I find leads, how do I talk to those leads, how do I close those leads, how do I develop my business, how do I develop myself, those are the sorts of questions, that's the environment you need to create. Um, and then finally, you need to be reflective, because obviously people will join me because they like me, people will join you because they like you. However, people clearly will leave me because they either don't like me, they don't like the support, they don't like my attitude, they don't like my honesty or something. Perhaps they don't like my shirt, I don't know. But there are times when people will leave me and go and join somebody else. And I have no personal problem, it's not personal with that. I reflect on it and I think about the, the relationship that I had that, with that individual. And did I say the right things at the right time? Did I give them the right support that they needed? And that isn't about being there with that individual all the time. It's about giving them the right information and then allowing them to go and try that, test that, fail with it, you know, just do something with it. And at some point, people just don't do that. And at that point, I then, I step back and I say, well, you know, I've given you everything you need to do. You now need to go and take some action. I cannot build that business for you. I can just provide you with the tools. Um, and sometimes that's not enough. That's not what people want. Um, and they go off and find somebody else. And that's absolutely fine. I don't have any issues with that at all. Um, we are a performance-related business. And if we perform as leaders, then clearly we'll get benefits from that. If we don't perform as leaders, clearly there won't be benefits for that. So just remember those things and just think about Disney World and Universal Studios or whatever analogy you want. You can think about, uh, I don't know, Woolworths, you know, Woolworths went bust. Why did that go bust? Service, rubbish products. Okay, so just think about it and try and relate that to how you have treated your people and the, and the people that come into your business and have you actively helped them, encouraged them and supported them. Many people will say yes, 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 and they'll tick those. I think a lot of you will actually, you know, if you really reflect on it carefully, you'll think, you know what, I didn't do a really good job with that person. That's probably why they left. That's probably why they were horrible to me. That's probably why they didn't do anything with the business. And that isn't always down to you as an individual, but you need to take some accountability and learn from those experiences. So hopefully that was my little rant. Got it out of the open. Um, I'm not saying cancel anything. I'm not saying go and find a new sponsor. I'm just saying learn from your experiences. Find the right sponsor, the right program for you personally, and then make sure that you you take action. Okay, so speak to you soon. Take care, and um, I'll watch out for the next video. Bye bye.